Hey everyone, I'm Leanne. If you don't know me, and if you do know me and you're back, thank you so much. I'm so glad you're back. Happy New Year. 2019 is over, but yet I am still talking about it. In my last video, I did my 2019 beauty favorites, and so many of you in the comments were like, but Leanne, what about podcasts? What about your playlist? What about all these other things that are not beauty? Because obviously everybody has many things in their life that they love and share continuously, especially if you're me and you make YouTube videos and vlogs and you're just talking about your life all the time. So obviously I have decided I need to do a part two of the 2019 favorites covering everything else. So TV, movies, music, podcasts, most importantly podcasts. Many of you asked about podcasts specifically and just other random life stuff. And actually I also had to throw in a couple beauty things that I forgot in the first part forgive me, but honestly, I've got to talk about them. They belong in the beauty favorites. So we're just throwing them in here. I don't know. This video is a mess. You'll see. I've got so much stuff to talk about. It is a whole lot of random stuff. So if you're not into that, I understand. You can leave me a comment down below. Tell me happy new year and be on your way. I understand. But for everyone else that requested this video, I am here for you. Happy new year. We're moving on to 2020 right after this. I promise. <laughs> this ponytail, however, I do not think I'm going to allow it into 2020. It's a mess, but it's better than the alternative. It's better than what I started with. That was bad. All right, let's start out with something that, you know, really lets you know, this is not a normal kind of favorites video for me. Let's talk about a vacuum. I have it right here propped up behind me. I tried to hide it because this is not that cute in the back of your thumbnail, but here it is. What are you called? Dyson V8 Absolute. I think it's like the pet vacuum. That is not the official name. I will find you the actual official Dyson approved name in the description down below. I just call it a vacuum and it works so well. The price for this vacuum is ridiculous. I will tell you that I acknowledge that but I really wanted to try it because obviously it's lightweight, it's cord free, it's easy to move around. And we've got three different levels in this house and it's just a hassle. The stairs are crazy. You do not wanna be lugging a super heavy vacuum up and down and up and down and all over the place. Like, no thank you. So we actually asked for this for Christmas last year. So we got this as a joint present from Grant's mom and it is so good. You can take the attachments off, it can turn it into like a little car vacuum, something for small spills where you can move it around really easy. You get different attachments on the bottom. I mean, y'all, you have to understand, it takes a lot for me to talk about like a cleaning product in a video because not my favorite thing, not a joy in my life. It's not something I look forward to, it's not something I'm passionate about, but this is that good and the price makes sense to me now. Like I'm so happy we have this, it's so good. It's especially been useful for this house, but really for anybody. And actually this has especially come in handy in the past month or so. If you watch my Christmas DIY video where I made that wreath and I went oh so wrong with it. If you didn't watch that video, you might not know what I'm talking about, but it was a mess. It continues to be a mess. I don't know if you can see it in the background. It's over that way, but it was stationed right by the wreath the entire time because every time you look at that wreath, snow falls and it's just bad. And this thing was like completely filled with flocking material, failed flocking material. If you've been thinking about getting a new vacuum, it's worth it, I'm just saying. Honestly, that felt weird. It feels very weird to talk about a vacuum on my channel. Let's never do it again. Okay, next. Another thing I do not love in my life, packing. Cleaning, packing, these are just things that I do not wanna spend my time on. I dread it, I put it off, I procrastinate, but this has made packing so much easier and it's not revolutionary. A lot of people have discovered packing cubes long, long, long before me and I really wish that I had found them long, long before I actually did. Now these are the cow pack packing cubes. It comes in a set. I don't know if this print is still available. It's like the confetti print. I think it was a collab with a blogger and they're really, really cute, but they do still offer this set and it comes with two smaller cubes and two bigger cubes. And let me tell you, I am not good at packing. I just pack everything because I want options and I don't necessarily want to plan out every single outfit, but obviously this would work either way if you're packing small or you're packing big, but I can fit everything into these packing cubes and it just makes it so much easier to keep everything organized and it doesn't like absolutely explode out of your suitcase. And when you have to get it all back in, it's just so much easier. I know not a revolutionary thing, but it's really helped me 
so much in my life for the past year, actually like two years at this point. But I really don't think I've talked about them before and I am sorry because I should have. The first two favorites I've talked about so far would probably apply to just about anyone in their daily lives. This one, maybe not so much, but I do think it's so helpful and it's something I had no idea about until I started paying more attention to my fertility and my cycles and trying to track things. This is a thermometer basically. It's a basal body thermometer, which is a special kind of thermometer and you can track your cycles with this. I'm not gonna explain the entire process of it because it's a little bit complicated and there are a million videos on YouTube about it. That's how I learned about it. But pretty much you wake up at the same time every day and the first thing you do before you move around, talk, do anything, don't drink anything, don't move, don't laugh, don't cry, nothing, you take your temperature. And this connects to an app and it records your temperatures over time and it shows how your cycles are going because there is a natural rise and fall of your temperatures through your cycles. And obviously nothing beats a doctor, but having this information on your side is really helpful, especially when you're thinking about fertility and a lot of things are out of your hands. And one thing that you can do to get more information on your own without a doctor, which I'm not saying don't go to a doctor, is charting your cycles, which I think is very helpful. It is a process, it is something you have to commit to, and I went cheap on mine because I wasn't really sure how committed I was gonna be, but I've been doing it for over a year now, probably like a year and two or three months, something like that, I can't remember exactly. It's been a long time, but I've stuck with it, and this is like a cheapy one, and it's really, really worked for me. I've been really impressed with it, and I would recommend it to anybody that wants to try charting their cycles. It's just super easy. Okay, so real quick, like I said, I had a couple of beauty things that I did not put in my beauty favorites video. I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna talk about them right now. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk to you about is this Revlon One Step Hair Dryer. There's a longer name out there for it, but if you've been with me a while, you might remember when I tried out the Dyson Air Wrap, and that thing is just so expensive. I love what it does to your hair. I think it's really beautiful. It's really amazing, like the technology. It's something that is unlike anything I've ever used on my hair, which I think is fascinating and I had to try it for that reason. But I also had to send it back because I just could not make peace with that price. And this is what I tried after that. Obviously, the price tag is a lot better. It's much more accessible for more people. And a lot of people say this is kind of a comparable tool to that Dyson Airwrap. And I don't really agree. You can curl your hair with the Dyson Airwrap. And this thing does not curl my hair. I do not use this to curl my hair, but I do use this to smooth my hair and give it a little bit more volume. And it's really easy to use. I've really, really been enjoying it. You've probably heard about this a million Million times is nothing new but it is really really good and I don't think I'd updated you on this situation so I just had to go ahead and do that because I've been using this every time I wash my hair for at least the last year okay next up another hair tool I don't know why I neglected my hair in my favorites but it just happened this is the bedhead wave artist hair waver I did a video not too long ago putting two different wavers head to head doing one side and the other side with a super expensive waiver and a not so expensive waiver on the other side that a lot of people have recommended that I found on Amazon. And the results of that video were kind of crazy. The inexpensive one from Amazon just quit working after like two times of using it. Like that video just fell apart on me. And honestly, I did really like the expensive one, but again, that price tag, not okay with me. I ended up taking that one back, even though I did like the waves that it gave me. And I ended up trying this one because this is another inexpensive one that a lot of people have recommended. But this one is a completely different wave pattern. And I was a little bit nervous about that because I thought it was gonna look crazy on me because the other wavers were a much more round, subtle wave. And this one is more like a crazy crimp where it's like, uh, 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 uh. You know what I mean. <laughs> well, I have to say to everyone that follows me on my Instagram story and was waiting for me to make a video about this, I am so sorry. I shot the video and then I never edited it. I am so sorry. I, it just fell through the cracks, but I'm talking about it now because I feel like I owe you. This one is actually really good. It does create a different wave pattern, but it calms down pretty much just like the other ones. And it looks really good. The waves last. And this one is a lot less expensive compared to the Amica one. And I can't remember how much I paid for this one, but I think it was around $30. It might've even been less. Prices on Amazon are always changing, so don't quote me on that, but I will put a link down below. It's definitely worth it. My little sister ended up getting this one. I really like it. I've seen a lot of people use it and love it, so I definitely recommend this one out of all of them that I've tried so far. I'm not gonna lie, it's mostly because it didn't quit working on me after two times. Okay, real quick, there's two more things that are 
kind of not like intangible, but they're not like products I can hold up and show you. First off, there's Home Chef. So I've done sponsored stuff with Home Chef before on my Instagram. I've even done one video, but this is not a sponsored thing. I even kind of went back and forth like, do I want to talk about this in the favorites video? Just because I've done sponsored stuff with them before and I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea, but like legitimately we have been doing home chef for so long for i'm pretty sure all of last year if not like 90 percent of last year and i really love it it really has made a big difference in how i cook at home i've learned so much because i've done so many different recipes they give you the ingredients and everything it's one of those meal kit boxes i think everyone has heard about them at this point but i just had such a good experience i've taken the recipes and then gotten the ingredients on my own and redone them i found favorite things that I want to make over and over again. It's just so easy and so convenient and I hate going to the grocery store and that's the biggest thing to me. So it's really made a huge difference in the amount that I cook at home and I don't know, it just like makes me really proud of myself when I make something that I wouldn't have just like found a recipe for. I don't know, I just kind of believe in myself a little bit more when it comes to cooking where this time last year I did not have the same relationship with cooking. So I feel like it's really made a difference in my life in the last year and I felt like I needed to mention it. Okay, now this next thing kind of relates to the last thing because like I said, I hate grocery shopping so much. Some people love it, like Grant likes it. I don't understand, he likes it, but he doesn't really have a ton of time to do it. I mean, some people, I'm sure some of you guys out there really enjoy it. They like to go, browse around, see what's new, get the deals, all of that. That is just not me. It feels like such a waste of time to me. I absolutely hate it. I hate waiting in lines. I hate not knowing where the ingredients are in the place. And I know the more you go, the more you learn. It's just not worth it to me. I wanna live my life in other ways. So I avoid it pretty much at all costs. And the way that I've avoided it most this year is doing Walmart pickup. So they offer delivery, but I don't really do that because I think that's more expensive. Honestly, I don't even know. So I just do the thing where you go in and you fill up your cart and you pick a time slot for the next day or later in the day and you just go and you pick it up. You don't even have to get out of your car. It is so easy and it's so convenient. And again, it's just made cooking so much easier and I just love it. I would not hesitate to recommend it to literally anyone. Next, I want to talk about Orange Theory. You might have heard about Orange Theory before. It's just basically a gym, it's a type of workout. I had a big goal over 2019 to get back in shape or get in good shape or get into some kind of shape because left to my own devices, I just become an absolute slug and I have no muscles and I really don't have a lot of motivation to work out. It just does not come naturally and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. And it is really good for me to have a trainer or some kind of class setting to get me motivated and get me consistently going. So I had that in Houston and then I didn't have that when I moved to Dallas and I was kind of just like, I don't know what I want to do. And I tried working out at home. I tried using an app and it was just not happening pretty much. I just was not doing it because I'm not motivated like that to work out. And so in the beginning of 2019, I started going to Orange Theory just to try it out. And I've done it pretty much twice a week almost every week for the past year. And I really, really like it. It never gets boring. They do kind of a combination of treadmills, rowing, and then they do weight room. And they always change it up. You never know what to expect. I think you can cheat and go on Reddit and see what the workout might be like, but I've never done that because honestly, I don't really care. I'm just happy I'm actually going. I love that you can kind of set your own pace. Like, yes, you are in a class. And I think some people kind of see it as like a competition thing, but I just don't see it like that at all like the first time I brought Grant he was like oh I got more points than like all these other people da, 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 da. and I was like oh I've like never thought about that before I'm like doing my little power walking and using my little 10 pound weights and I'm just happy I'm there because honestly that's like an accomplishment enough for me and I'm just happy I'm doing something and even with those like pretty low standards for myself I've definitely seen a change in my body and even just going twice a week like I think it's had a positive impact and I feel stronger and I can see I have more muscles, I'm more toned and I'm like a skinny, lanky kind of shape. And now I can see I have muscles and it's really cool and I feel stronger and it is expensive but I do feel like it's worth it. Okay, the sun is going down. I'm sweating in this sweater. I've got to get this video done. Right now, I just need to talk to you about 
TV, podcast, and a couple movies. Actually, is there more than that? I don't even know. I've got such a list in here. I don't even know where to begin. This list just goes on and on and on. Um, let's start with TV. So my criteria for TV, I didn't really want to talk about TV that is like in season two, three, whatever, but I did make some exceptions. So if it's something that I haven't talked about before, or I've just talked about in vlogs or something like that, I will talk about it here, but generally I wanted to talk about new shows. So the first one I'm going to tell you about is on becoming a God in central Florida, that name, why is it so long? I can never remember it. This show is so good. It's something so different and I love it. So it's Kirsten Dunst and she's living in Florida. It's the early nineties and her family is struggling. She's got a baby, she's got a husband. The husband is in an MLM. We all know that is a road to disaster. It's a dead end. Things just do not go right in your life. If you're involved in an MLM, just don't do it. It's never been a good idea. It's still not a good idea. And honestly, not to get off track, but I see people on YouTube promoting this stuff and I'm worried about you. And I'm like, horrified kind of because you've got an audience and you're pushing out this stuff and I don't, let's just not get into it. It's just a scam. But this show has a major drop dead gorgeous vibes. And if you've seen that movie, I hope you love that movie because it is so good. And I get that feeling and it is a very good thing. It is dark. It's extremely dark. It's funny, but it's so dark that I recommended this show or actually Grant and I recommended this show to my mother-in-law and she didn't want to watch it. Like she watched the first episode and she was like, this is not for me. It's not a happy feel good show. And pretty much anything that I recommend, you can assume it's not a happy feel good thing unless I specifically tell you. That's just a warning about me in general. I don't want to ruin anything about these shows, so I'm not going to tell you a lot, but basically she's got her little family in Florida. They're struggling and things go off the rails in a major way. The next one is the Imagineering story. And even though I just said, I don't like sweet, heartwarming things, this is one of them. This one is a nice one. It's on Disney Plus, And basically it's talking about the history of the Imagineers how the Disney parks came to be, how they've changed over time, the leadership, the success, the failures, everything. I feel like this show would be interesting even for somebody that isn't like a Disney fanatic or a Disney person. But if you are a Disney person, like you need to watch this. It is so good. It's so interesting. Really just like seeing the leadership and how far they've come and like how they've done so many things that no one had done before. It's just fascinating to me and it's probably not for everyone but I absolutely loved it and I'm so sad it's over like I want more episodes even though they went through all of the history and time has to go on to have more story but I want more okay next up on my list Barry okay this one was an exception to my rule it's been out for a very long time and I do think I've mentioned it in favorites before but I don't think I've talked about it enough don't even ask me questions about this. It's just the best show, okay? No questions asked, moving on. Okay, now the last show that I have to tell you about is Secession. Again, it's a dark one. And actually season one came out in I think 2018, but I didn't start watching it until 2019, so it counts. And I watched season one and two this past year and I hated it. When I started watching this show, I was like, nope, this is for like douchey guys. I am not the target market for this show. I hate absolutely every character in the show. I cannot stand it, but I gave it a chance. Like I got into like episode two, episode three, and then I was like, wait a minute, I cannot stop watching this. Actually now I would say I still kind of hate it. I still kind of hate every single character except for maybe Greg. I kind of can't get enough of him, but I'm completely sucked in. At this point, it would be very, very difficult to explain the whole plot because it's just gone so many different directions so many times. It's one of those shows where you just never know what's gonna happen. But pretty much it's about this family, this sickeningly wealthy family and they're crazy dysfunctional, like consistently about one inch away from complete self-destruction, but every single episode leaves you wanting more. You hate everybody, but you still want more. It's very weird. Okay, I am so sorry. The lighting of this video just got so creepy, but I had to run up and get a ring light because the light is going down. And I still have a whole list of podcasts to talk to you guys about. This is the last section, but I feel like it's a very important section because it's something people ask me about all the time because you guys know I cannot stop listening to podcasts all the time. It's probably a problem, but 
For now, I'll just tell you my favorites. We can analyze that later or not. Oh, wait, before I talk about podcasts, my Spotify playlist, my 2019, what I've been listening to, you know, Spotify like makes a playlist for you for 2019. I've gone through and edited it, edited it. And I'll put the link in the description. If you're curious, I put out Spotify playlists, like, I don't know, once every few months. I used to do it every month, so I have a bunch of different playlists on there, and I'll do one that kind of compiles all of my 2019 favorites. So that will be down in the description. All right, so for podcasts, I actually watch a lot of podcasts. I usually talk to you guys about podcasts that I listen to on Stitcher, and they're just audio, but I also really like when I can actually see it if I wanna see it. So usually those podcasts are all like comedy podcasts, but one that I've discovered in the last year that I really, really loved, and I don't know if you would categorize it as a comedy podcast, but I kind of feel like it is because the host is Christina Pazinski and she's a comedian. She's Tom Segura's wife. He's also a comedian. You might have heard of their podcast they have together, Your Mom's House. Well, I really, really like her new podcast and it's called Where My Mom's At. I am probably not the target market for this podcast, but I stumbled on it and I absolutely love it. I really, really like her. And basically the format is her talking to other mothers. She's a mother of two little boys and she goes through and interviews other moms in her life, other friends, other celebrities, other comedians. And I just really love her take on things, her perspective on things. She's obviously a comedian, so she's really funny, but she's also just really real. Like, I don't know if that even means anything at this point, because everybody says everything is like so real, but she's just very authentic and she will tell you the bad stuff and the good stuff. And it's just interesting. They are real stories from real people. And it's not that like candy coated, sugar coated, Instagram worthy kind of stuff where it's just like being a mom is so worthwhile and la 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 la. And it's just like kind of comes off like lies. And it probably is because there's a lot more to the story. Well, this podcast talks about the other stuff in the story. And it's just really good. And honestly, it's probably mostly because I really, really like her and I think she's really funny. Oh, I didn't even put it on this list, but like the new Dr. Drew podcast. I've also really enjoyed that. I don't know why I didn't put that here, but I guess I just, when I'm talking to you guys about podcasts, I'm always thinking about like, audio podcasts. I don't know why. Anyway, I'll try to change that in the future, but let's go on. I have a lot of podcasts to talk about, so. Let's talk about some true crime podcasts. First of all, I have talked about all of these in the past because obviously I'm sharing my favorite podcasts along the way as I'm listening to them, but this is just a compilation of my top favorites for this last year. I listen to a lot of podcasts, but these are just a few that I feel like are must listens. You know what I mean? So first on this list is Cold. This podcast will mess you up. It will mess you up for like a week if you listen to one episode. Of course, I was like binging it and ruining my whole life. It is just so dark and so awful. It is about the Susan Powell case. If you're anything like me, it is just like sickening. She disappeared. Her husband was one of the main suspects. He was acting really weird. There's a lot about their relationship that came out over time, a lot about his family that came out over time. There's just a lot of dark, twisted stuff that came out. I don't wanna ruin anything if you've never heard about it, but this podcast just goes extremely deep in the story. It tells you a lot of stuff that, like a typical Dateline episode wouldn't tell you because obviously it's way, way, way longer and it's very interesting. It's like the car crash you cannot look away from and I would say it's like my top true crime podcast from the last year, but it was very, very early last year. And I think it started in 2018. I can't remember. Either way, if you haven't listened to it, listen to it. If you listen to it and you hate it and it ruins your life, I am so sorry. Next up is Root of All Evil. This is the story of the Hodel family and their connection to the Black Dahlia. To be honest, when I first heard about this podcast and I knew it had something to do with the Black Dahlia, I was like, mm, not for me. I'm not really interested. I don't really know why, but true crime stories that are a little bit more recent, not like way back Black Dahlia days, like, I just connect to them more, they just interest me more. And so I almost completely passed up on this one, but I started it and I got completely sucked in. But I definitely say this podcast goes so much deeper into the history of the family. Dr. George Hodel, his daughter, his family, her family, it just is a lot more family history and about the horrific things that went on and how it affected 
generations down the line. And it's just so much more than just a true crime podcast. And it's so much more than just like the Black Dahlia, which of course that's an interesting story to so many people. But what got me into it is the story of the Hodel family. And I will say, if you watch the TV show, like the TNT TV show that was supposed to be like, a companion to this podcast. Do not judge this podcast based on that show because in my opinion, that show was not good. I did not even stick with it because it just seemed really cheesy to me. And this podcast is so much more than that. Okay, next up, The Clearing. This podcast is all about the daughter of Edward Wayne Edwards, who was actually convicted after she made a call after she suspected her father of these murders. And it's so interesting and Again, what I really, really like about hearing true crime podcasts is not just the story of something horrible that happened, but some of the motivation or some of the history. Like, I want to hear about what happened to that person that led them down that road. Like, what brought these people together? Like, why did all this happen? Like, obviously no one knows why most of these things happen, but I wanna hear the history. I wanna hear the backstory. I wanna see connections that aren't just on the surface level. You know what I mean? And I feel like this podcast and really all the podcasts that I like to talk about, I feel like that's what it's about. It's not just like a service level, like, oh my gosh, guess what happened? This horrible thing, you know, like I just, I'm interested in that, but I always want more, you know what I mean? Okay, moving on. I'm trying not to talk your ear off and be here for five years. Okay, next up is culpable. This is all about the death of Christian Andriacchio. The police or law enforcement pretty much immediately called it a suicide and no one else on the planet agrees. Like none of the stuff in the story, all the evidence, everything they've learned since it happened, it just doesn't add up. And so many people think it was a murder. And I love how this podcast went after trying to get in contact with those people that might have more of the story that might've been involved. Like they really pursued them and it was so, so interesting. I don't know if this is a spoiler, they didn't reach a conclusion, but I feel like they made so much progress that wasn't there before. And I really, really enjoyed it. Again, this was one that I didn't get into immediately. Like I listened to the first one and I kind of strayed away and I was like, maybe that one's not for me. But then when I went back to it, I binged it and got all caught up and listened to like a ton of it in one big chunk. And it was so good. Oh my gosh, you guys, I feel so bad about this creepy lighting. Like, let me apologize. 5 million times. I am so sorry, but I had to do it. Okay. All right. I've got one more podcast to talk about. I've talked about it before semi recently and like a hundred times on my Instagram story and it's Dolly Parton's America. This podcast is so good. And I told you, I will tell you when something is not dark and twisted and this podcast is not dark and twisted. It is so inspiring. It is so encouraging. And it's all about Dolly Parton. Of course, hello. It's in the title. They just do a deep dive all about her career, how she's evolved over time, and really just take a look at how everybody relates to her, why everyone in the world embraces Dolly Parton and how she's cultivated a career like this. So many times in this podcast, they started going down a road, they started in on a topic where it could really make you question her or question her motives or how genuine she really seems. And honestly, it would really make me nervous because I'm like, are they trying to expose her right now? And I mean, obviously it's journalism. You got to tell the story like you find it, but inevitably they would come back around and it would show how she really is, what she presents herself to be and what her core values are and how she just cares for people. And it's so encouraging. And I feel like I learned a lot because she really is somebody to look up to. And she really is like, an icon like she is just like an american treasure and i know that's very like sweet and sappy and everything but i just love her and i loved every single episode of this podcast i really don't even know how many times i said i feel like this podcast cannot get any better like the next episode cannot possibly top this one and it always did it always got better and better and i just enjoyed it so much all right finally i'm done with my list we can finally be free of this creepy lighting i cannot apologize enough i'm so sorry it looks so bad 
I will never do this again, but I had to make this video happen. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll put links to everything that I can find down in the description. I hope it's helpful. I hope you guys are having a great start to the new year. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If you have subscribed, thank you so much. You are my people. One quick note before I go, I am planning a channel merge with my vlog channel. So all the vlogs will be here on my main channel. Everything will go on this channel. So if you're looking for vlogs, you will find them here. Basically, it's just a one-stop shop of me and my life and everything that I have to share with you guys. And I hope you guys enjoy that and support that in the new year. I don't know exactly when it's gonna happen. Oh my gosh, what was that? The light just turned up all by itself out of nowhere. That's very spooky. I'm not exactly sure when the channel merge is gonna happen exactly, but I will keep you guys in the loop as much as possible on my social medias and everywhere. So follow me over there. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone. Mama's sweating already. This is like a sweater dress and it's really thick and I think it's really cute, but it could also very easily become a costume if I wanted to become like a bowl of oatmeal. Here we are friends, a bowl of oatmeal.